Shakes TV. My name is Memma Drame. I'll be your host for the show today. Um, I have a very special guest with me here who goes by the name Fatima Sisa. Fatima was born in a very remote village called Tambasansang. Um, she, what makes Fatima special is she's actually the first person, the first lady rather, to be born and brought up in her village to have a bachelor's degree. In fact, she graduated with cum laude. Welcome, Fatima. Um, it's indeed a pleasure to have you here. Um, so, can you tell us who Fatima Sisawa is? Um, thank you so much, Mirba. Assalamu alaikum, viewers. Um, to be honest, I'm really glad and honored to be here today. It's a pleasure as to you, have you here. As you rightly mentioned, I am Miss Fatima Taki Sisawa, a 22-year-old lady, being born and brought up in URR in a village called Tamba Sansa. Um, basically, Fatmata is an entrepreneur, a bachelor's degree holder in political science with cum laude, and someone that, that has the passion for giving back to her society. Because as it is said, acquiring education is meaningless if you don't give back to your society and also make a positive impact in the life of the younger ones. So basically, this is who Fatmata is. Um, that's, that's amazing. That's really, really impressive. So, Ms. Fatima, can you tell us about your educational background? Yeah, um, I started my primary school in Tamasansan Primary from 2004 to 2010. And then when I completed my grade 6, um, because as we all know that the educational system in the rural area uh, is of low quality compared to that of the urban yeah. centre. So um, I want to have that quality education. So when I completed my grade six uh, in 2010, I decided to move uh, to the Combos. So I attended La Kunda Yenganya Upper Bindik School from 2010 to 2013. Okay. So when I completed that too, I proceeded to go to senior secondary school known as Mona Zamat Al Dawa Al Islamiya okay. from 2000. And 13 to 2016. So when I completed uh, that too, before um, I got an admission from the University of the Gambia, I decided to um, get a certificate level in French at Alliance uh, Francis. Mm -hmm. uh, then in 2017, I got an admission from the University of the Gambia to pursue a bachelor's degree in political science. So um, I did the four years program from 2007 2017 to 2020 okay. and I graduated recently in, in the last 13 convocation okay. just um, this February okay. so this is my education uh, uh, um, your, your educational background is really impressive um, from being a, a village guard to a bachelor's degree all that that's really impressive yeah. so um, like I would like to know what challenges you might face in during your educational career um, to be honest, um, it was never an easy journey because um, life in general, if Slime. you want to achieve something, you, you, have, you, you do have obstacles on the way, yeah. but with determination, with hard work, with patience, you know, you, you will be able to tackle all that. Yeah. So for me, um, the journey was never an easy journey, starting from my primary school. Okay. Um, like I said earlier, the educational system again in the rural area compared to that of the urban center, like it's quite different. So laying my uh, foundation in that type of educational structure or system, you, you tend to realize that even like you, you do have many things, uh, obstacles on the way. So, um, and the other challenge that challenges that I face uh, is that being brought up in a society where the people have the stigma, the mentality that educating a girl child is a waste of time and resources. So um, you, you, you hear them saying that because So being brought up in that in that type of society, you know, and it's not easy at all. And another challenge that I faced uh, during my primary school is that for, for, for us, those that are brought up in you, uh, rural areas or those that are brought up in that type of society, 
you you don't even have time to read your books okay. because you have to help your uh, mother with the household chores. And during reading season after school, you have to go to the farm. Sometimes you don't even have time to read your books. Okay. So um, these were um, some of the challenges that I faced during my uh, primary school. Now uh, moving to my upper basic school, you and I said again the educational system because um, when you move to the, uh, the urban center, you tend to realize that the educational system, they are quite different. Mm -hmm. Because when I came before I adapt to the system, it was never an easy, easy thing. Job. Because when I came, you know, when I see my colleagues speaking fluently in English, sometimes I would just be staring at them. Yeah, so yeah. to some extent, it even limited my participation in class. Sometimes um, when, when they are talking, I would just be staring at them. But as time goes on, like I adopted to the system. So um, for, for upper basic, I think this, this was the only challenge that I faced. Wow. Um, so when I completed uh, my grade nine, moving to senior secondary school, I had this uh, financial issue. Yeah, because my, my colleagues even started ahead of me, then I later joined them. But uh, thanks to my dad, as I, uh, like, I know it is the responsibility of every father to educate their children, yeah. but my father went extra miles positively to, to ensure that I continued with my education. Yeah. yeah. So senior secondary, um, that was the only challenge mm -hmm. that I faced because by then I already adopted to the system. So, so uh, when I went, when I was done with my senior secondary, moving to um, university. When I got an admission in 2017, okay. I nearly deferred the semester because wow. um, I had the same financial issue, issue again. So um, I nearly deferred though because um, I had no one to pay for me. So there was this guy that I met. He was a colleague of mine um, in senior secondary school. So he was like, oh, Fatima, what are you up to? Then I told him that uh, I got an admission. Uh, from the University of the Gambia to pursue a bachelor's degree in political science, okay. but uh, maybe I would defer the semester. And he was like, okay, what, what was the problem? Then I explained everything to him, and he was like, okay, why don't you go to um, Ministry of Higher Education and apply for scholarship there? So I went there. So fortunately, uh, I was able to have a scholarship, Sorry. and they sponsored my entire four years program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and during my university, um, another challenge that I faced was um, uh, compared to the challenges that every university student faced. For me, I, I didn't have the opportunity to have gadgets like laptop and yeah. tablet compared to those that are from a very rich family. Mm -hmm. yeah. As I am from a very, uh, very poor family, okay. so um, I didn't have laptop. I didn't have tablet. Like, I had this tablet uh, in my first semester, but it has a problem. So I can say that the entire four years I was using my phone. So it was it was oh, never an easy thing, thing yeah. to be honest. So sometimes when I when I do have um, uh, assignments to do, I have to borrow my friend. Um, laptop to do the assignment then after I return it to her. So um, to be honest, it was, an it easy, was yeah. never an easy journey. Yeah, yeah. So basically these, these were the challenges that, that I faced uh, during my education. Um, okay, okay. Um, and what you just said showed that you are a very resilient lady because um, it really takes patience and hard work and determination mm -hmm. to, you know, to go through all these challenges um okay um so you know it's not an easy thing so like you shared you faced a lot of challenges however what are the things that inspired you and motivated you to keep going and to keep pushing and pushing until you reach this far okay um that is a very important question um being the first a uh, child to both my parents, both my dad and my mom. I take uh, it as a responsibility upon myself to change the status quo. As I said, I, I, am, a I am from a very uh, poor family and also I, I have siblings that are looking up to me. Because if I do good, 
they will follow. And if I do bad too, they will follow. So um, I take it as a responsibility to be that hard working, determined and independent young lady so that my siblings and other young ones around me can also do the same. Yeah, so that, that is one thing that really motivated me to, to be who I am today. Another thing is, as I said, um, being brought up in a, in a society where the people think that educating a girl child is a waste of time and resources. So um, that too, sometimes I will sit in and I'll be like, okay, how can I change this mentality of my people? And I was like, okay, I could do this through um, education because when, when, when they see me um, successful. successful, yeah, they, 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 they will also be motivated to, to let their children, uh, like especially the, the young girls to, to, to be educated. So these were some of the things that, that really motivated me um, to be who I am today. Okay. Okay. That's 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 amazing. That's really amazing. So, um, like I would like to know now, where are you heading to? Like, what plans do you have for the future? Um, as I said earlier, I just graduated, okay. and I'm currently serving as an intern at Center for Research and Policy Development, okay. and also seeking for jobs. As right now, as I'm speaking, I'm yet to secure one. And also, I, I want to further my education. I want to do master's in public administration. And after that, yeah, in as much as I want to be educated, I also want to get married. Maybe after master's, then I want to build a family and instill that good principle in my children. So, okay, that's and also, um, as I said, I am an entrepreneur. So I want to expand my business and also employ young, People. dynamic ladies, young young girls here in, in the business. Okay, so. okay, okay. That's that's really amazing, you know. So um, um, another advice that I would give to the young ones is that they need to know the people that they will align themselves with. Because peer influence could be dangerous. It could be good in some aspect, but it could be really dangerous. So they need to know the people that they will align themselves with. If you know that you, you are moving with someone that doesn't have any good impact in your life and the person is influencing you badly, stop moving with the person because you know what brings you to where you are. If you know that you, you will be able to achieve so many things. So that is another advice that I will give to the young ones. Um, it's actually a beautiful thing to want to have a master's degree and get married. So I hope no one is waiting at the corner right now. Not really. Uh, Not okay. really. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, another thing that I've been thinking of is that being the first female to be born and brought up in my village okay. and attended um, primary school there to oh. go all the way to the to university to earn a bachelor's degree. So I want to initiate something. This will be a, a mentorship initiative because I believe that there are so many potential girls out there, especially in URR, that, that, that lack the pro they, they lack the proper mentoring and empowering that they deserve to be yeah. able to achieve their goals. Yeah. So the mentorship will be centered in URR. Yeah. So this is something that I really want to do. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, that's that's amazing. That's a beautiful thing. Um, okay, so another thing is, um, what advice do you have for the young ones? Because your journey is it was not easy, but you pushed until you reach um, where you wanted to be. So, what advice do you have for the young ones who dream to be just like you? Yeah. Um, to be honest, as I said earlier, in order to achieve something in life. You really need to be hard working, you need to be determined, you need to be patient because patient is a virtue. Yeah. So the advice that I would give them is that wherever situation they find themselves in, because leaving your parents back home to, to come and acquire knowledge, it, it will not be easy. Yeah. So they, they like they need to be determined, they need to be hard working, they need to be respectful with any type of people they have around them. them. So um, this is the advice that I would give to young ones. And also, they need to know where they come from. 
because as the many castilian coast nearly what a dame i kara ne bita dame so the, this saying really motivated me to be who i am today so they, they need to be hard working they need to be patient i know uh, that i am the first female to be born and brought up in my village to have a bachelor's degree but i know i will not be the last person because i know that there are so many potential girls in there that can go extra miles to achieve more than i achieved yeah. so um, this is the advice that i would give to them let them be patient let them be hard working let them be respectful so when when they have all that they will achieve able to achieve what they want achieve yeah Oh, okay thank you very much for that wonderful advice um okay is there any other thing you would like to share with us uh yes because as the saying goes no man is an island yeah because it doesn't take you to have all that you need okay. so without the support without the contribution of so many people i wouldn't reach this far oh, yeah. so first i would like to thank my dad for supporting me to reach this far as i said earlier it is the responsibility of every father to educate their children but my father is amazing he went extra miles to extra miles positively to ensure that i acquired education that i deserve and my mom too despite not being to school despite not being educated she 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 is my source of motivation and inspiration because she always motivated me to do good and instill that prin good principle in me so um thank you mom and dad i'm really grateful and not um forgetting the ministry of higher education uh, i'm really grateful to be honest because without their support uh i wouldn't reach this far so i'm thanking them for supporting my entire four years um program and I, I will take this opportunity to thank my aunt and her husband that I stayed with during my uh, junior school and my senior secondary. And I will take this opportunity to thank my aunt and her husband that I'm currently staying with. I will thank my lecturers, my teachers, my colleagues, my friends, my family members for supporting me to reach this far. Because without their support, I wouldn't be who I am today. And not forgetting Sex TV, I'm really grateful. I'm indeed grateful. Um, thank you so much for giving me the platform to share my experience with the rest of the world. To be honest, um, I'm really grateful. Um, thank you very much, Ms. Fatima. Um, it's a pleasure to, to have you here. Um, we are grateful for you to use our platform and share your experience with the world. Um, okay, thank you very much, viewers. That brings us to the end of the show. Um, well, before going, we would like to thank Ms. Fat Aja Lego Scora for sponsoring the show. Um, without our donation, the show will not be possible. Um, please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you very much. Have a good day.